Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the May monthly meeting, monthly May meeting of the Residence Council. I'm Peter Shapiro, president. Glad to have you with us by whatever means you are, uh, on television or in the webinar or uh, watching on YouTube. It's good to have all three of those opportunities. Uh, I will start things off showing you the agenda. We will start uh, the usual way uh, with the things that we need to do to keep you informed and to keep ourselves in compliance with the uh, various state and areas of governance. Uh, this will be the approval, presentation approval of the minutes uh, by Connie Hillier, a financial report from Diane T Tinker as we start the new fiscal year. And Monday market report from Cami and Susan. Didn't mean to bring that one up. Okay, so Connie. Yeah. The yeah. minutes of the April meeting have been reviewed by the council members and are now submitted for your approval. I move. A motion to approve, please. I'll move. Second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, uh, please signify by raising your hands and if your uh, microphone is live by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Okay, thank you very much, Connie. Uh, so now, Diane, it's you, and I'll be putting up the notes of the, uh, the dollars and cents, or dollars anyway. Dollars, yes. I dropped the cents. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have any cents this month. <laughs> so our April income was $6,307. April expenses were 4406 So we had a net operating profit of $1,901 for the first month of our new fiscal year. Thank you, Diane. Any questions for Diane? Okay, thank you very, very much. By the way, for uh, people who are not on the council, remember that these materials are available, both the minutes and the financial materials are available both in the library uh, in paper form and at uh, HH Connect you know, in the right-hand column of the Residence Council area. So you can take a look at them there anytime you want. Okay. Um, now, uh, Cami and Susan, Cami Ilbo and Susan Barish, how's it going? Well, going well. Uh, you hear the total number from Diane. I'm always struck by how our income each week goes up and down by a lot. I'm looking at the April and May so far figures and it can be a thousand dollars difference. So the first week in May, we made $900. The second week in May, we made $1,900. So we continue to average roughly $1,300 a week. So that's, that is consistent with what we've projected. And it's all based on donations. The donations people bring in so don't put in the bin or when they move or when they die or when they move in. Um, we've got some wonderful donations from people who are just moving in lately. And um, we clean everything up so it looks really good. We go through a lot of, of copper polish on the bottoms of Revere pots. And that turns a $3 pot into a $6 pot. So uh, we're, we're um, quite happy with the way things are going right now. With thank goodness for elbow grease, all the many <laughs> elbows that you have working down there. It's a great, great group of people. This wonderful group of people. I highly recommend your participation if you're not already participating. So, uh, any questions for Cami before Susan picks up? Okay, Susan Barish. Well, as Cami said, we certainly had a, a 
huge day in the market on Monday, and there were some fabulous housewares that were scooped up very quickly by people who recognize the, the great values. So keep those wonderful donations coming because that's how we make our money. Um, we do have something we wanna request though, and that is that residents hold off on donating grocery bags. We are sort of awash in grocery bags right now. And uh, so if you could just put your grocery bags in the recycle bins in your uh, service closet for the time being, there may come a time when we will need them again. Um, but right now we just have tons. And so uh, we're, we're kind of looking for places to store them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the status of things. Um, we continue to have great volunteers helping us and great customers. So it's a win-win. That's great. It is, it is a tremendously wonderful enterprise, the heart of, of Horizon House in so many ways both in terms of personality, in terms of dollars to allow us to do our programs and so forth. So uh, check it out if you haven't already as a volunteer. I know you, you all know the uh, space as a shopper. Um, and I'm sure, as Susan, it occurred to me, probably you and your volunteers have enough input of uh, these double grocery bags yourselves. To, <laughs> you probably never really need to have any from, from other people. <laughs> Well, everybody's shopping online and everything is delivered. You know, we can't use our, we used to go to the store and use our grocery bags and we don't do that anymore. So um, you multiply that by the number of people who live in this uh, complex. It's a lot of bags every week. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, okay. Thank you. Any, any questions for Susan? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Susan and Cammie. So moving on, we'll have a report from your president, me, moi, uh, and a management report. But from Mike, this is on the, under the old principle of uh, age before beauty. Uh, and so uh, we're keeping that tradition going. But before I start, I'll t turn this off. And uh, I know uh, George wanted to just say a, a few words about why uh, we haven't heard anything about uh, the impact on us right here of the changes of, of philosophy and, and, and regulations, uh, uh, policies announced by the CDC. George, just say a word or two about that. Yes, thank you, Peter. Well, because we, have, we are a long-term care facility with an assisted living component, we fall under the guidance of the Department of Health. So we are waiting a report from them in terms of how they wish to respond to the wonderful uh, and uplifting mandate we heard last, recommendations we heard last week from the Centers for Disease Control to see how, how they should be applied to institutions like ours. So we expect to hear any day and we'll have more information. For the time being, we're just staying the course and waiting. Thank you. Great. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll be hearing from you when, when the news comes out. Okay. So um, I'm going to talk about the election season. It's upon us. Now, there is the election season outside our doors, uh, which will be brought to us by, uh, in terms of program by our election forms committee. But I'm talking about the election season that will be taking place right here in Horizon House. The council, as you probably all are aware, consists of 15 elected members, uh, as well as the uh, co-chairs of the uh, Monday, Monday market, who are ex officio, not voting members. Uh, and the service is a three-year term for each of those council members. The terms cannot be renewed. So every year we elect new council members and typically the turnover is one third of the council leaving on December 31st and new people taking official office on January 1st. Uh, of course, there's a transition period uh, once the new members are elected by the, um, by the residents uh, and we work with the new members orienting them and making assignments and getting ready for them to join and be active. So, um, the bylaws call for uh, Audrey as vice president, Audrey Whitecamp as vice president of administration and me to uh, consult 
and in May appoint a chair for a nominating committee that will uh, bring about the start the process of bringing about the election. And I am delighted to be saying announcing that I have appointed uh, Dick Clark, and he is uh, accepted. Uh, and uh, he is a, the uh, chair of the new nominating committee. Dick, thank you. I know you'll be providing great leadership and I look forward to working with you as a uh, resource on things that you want, want to know from a presidential point of view. I'm not a voting member. And there are four other members. It's a total committee of, of five and the bylaws, it's a very smartly constructed set of bylaws, including the composition of the nominating committee. The nominating committee is limited to one current council member. Now in this particular year, it's going to be Dick as the chair. That means that there are four people who have had, who are not a part of the uh, old guard uh, by design. And this is a, a, it's proved to be something that really keeps the council open and to new ideas, new people uh, uh, from, from the community because of the way it's structured. Um, so uh, next month, uh, uh, Dick and his com uh, committee will begin to receive nominations uh, for their consideration uh, to present a slate at the October meeting, the monthly meeting of the Residence Council in October. Begin thinking about it now. Who would you like to see come on the council? Uh, would you consider coming on the council yourself? Uh, you can nominate yourself, uh, that'll all be explained, or you can nominate others. Um, would you be willing to volunteer your time and talents and service of our community? It's rewarding work. It's important work. So begin thinking about it, and you have an opportunity to take action in June. Now come the beauty part of this presentation, that's Mike. Hey, uh, Peter, I was just wondering, uh, do you have a PAC yet formed for the uh, candidates running for residence council office? And have you gone through the legal vetting of that yet? My God. Oh, you didn't have to throw that in my lap right now in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry to put you on the spot. Well, thank you for having me. I, I, I'll try to be brief. Uh, I mentioned a few things here that are hopefully a, of interest. Uh, for those who were here during Mother's Day, I hope that you enjoyed the brunch and uh, we, I was here. I handed out flowers to, uh, to our, uh, many of our staff and to a few residents as well. Uh, Ib Rosen was really kind to offer ice cream bars to everybody last Wednesday. And I thought, gee, what a nice gesture. I hope you enjoyed it and you hope you had a chance to uh, thank Ib for his generosity. He's, he's that kind of guy. Uh, George mentioned the uh, the CDC and our uh, um, you know having to work under the Department of Health and uh, so you've got that message just stay the course we hope to hear this week and when we do we'll certainly let everybody know what the change in protocol is if there is one. Uh, we had small group sessions uh, last week you know this is a tradition that we established a few years ago here and it, it's a very valuable one. Certainly, you know, during COVID, it's been a little tougher doing it just on Zoom. We had 43 residents participating, and typically uh, we would have uh, 30 per session, which would be between 90 and 120 in person. But hopefully by the time we get to maybe not June, but by July, I really hope we're doing these in person because it really enhances our ability to communicate and understand each other and, and to, to kind of feel how people might feel about a topic, which is harder to experience on, on Zoom. And with that, I, I just wanted to mention as I, I did in the, uh, the small group sessions about, you know, COVID has really compromised our communication in, in a lot of ways. You know, Zoom has done a great job in giving us a platform to stay connected. But I would think that, you know, decisions and things like the salon uh, decision probably could have been better communicated, better vetted, better exchange of ideas and understanding had we had the opportunity to meet more in person rather than deal with something in writing or, or just in, in casual mention. So, uh, you know, we, we really do value the in-person connections. and I, I think we're all hoping we're going to have more of that as, as time marches on. 
Uh, one of the, the things that I mentioned in the memo when I was reversing that, the decision on the salon is that Peter and uh, Ann Brand and I would get together and we'd have some conversation about how and what we could do differently so we don't get into those binds where we have hard feelings about decisions such as the salon. So we met yesterday and we had some good conversation and you know there's no big formula for this, but I, I think we kind of renewed a commitment to be talking about things that affect uh, the community and residents uh, to, to do more uh, advanced conversation and make sure that there's input and opportunity for, for understanding. So we will, I will definitely make sure that we're doing that on, on things that, that affect the community and, and residents. Uh, the grocery van will, will kick off. We thought it would be a little bit earlier, but it'll be mid-June. Uh, we thought it would be early June. It's mostly about just getting staffing freed up. The My, the person who does it, is helping out in the garage for a garage attendant who's been uh, away uh, in his home country for the last three or four weeks and hasn't returned yet. So we'll get that shifted over and make sure we can make the grocery runs. Uh, I did talk in our small group sessions about, you know, master planning and that, that we went from a master plan to kind of canceling it to kind of doing parts of it, i.e. the fireside lounge. And we have been busy working on some design things with our internal architects. Uh, and we thought, I thought we would be able to have conversation around this in June. But I think that because of the magnitude of some of these projects, we need to screw it down a little tighter and then open it up for conversation and input uh, in the fall. So the, the goal here is to tighten up some design, get a little better idea on some of the costing because it's a huge number. Uh, talk to our finance committee in June to make sure they understand how we can afford it and what parts and over what period of time. Present that to the board uh, in August so they can say, yeah, that makes sense or no, do this, do that. And then we really do wanna open it up for people's points of view. Uh, yes, the design has, has been laid out by Methune, our new architects, coupled with our internal architects, but it's like all designs, it benefits from the input of our residents who live in our community. And we expect to have a lot of conversation about that. And there's no um, you know, timeline that says we have to, to, to rush that. So we wanna make sure we are diligent in getting your input. A big part of that, I should mention, will be how we do dining. Uh, dining, you know, is something that needs to evolve with uh, uh, the times. And what we've noticed is that there are people who want more of the grab and go, and they want to have more options at more times during the day. And we also want to make sure that we're activating the space in where the TDR is so that it's a space that is legitimately enjoyably used throughout the day for multiple purposes of meeting with friends or just reading or having coffee or doing whatever. It, you know, now it's a three day park deal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and otherwise it's closed. And it's kind of a shame to close off that much of space at Horizon House. Let's find a creative way uh, to open it up and have it be a comfortable space that people wanna be in. Uh, just a couple other things. We are still working through our, our uh, mandatory vaccination policy for our staff, and we are committed to doing that. Uh, we are in negotiation with the union. They're in, in agreement in general, so we're making a little bit of progress here, but it's baked into a larger negotiation. So we need to, to dovetail with the, the union on this thing, uh, but it is underway. And we had a board of trustees meeting on uh, the 4th of May and, and the speaker, I try to bring in guest speakers because it's always illuminating for our board to experience somebody who has experience across the entire industry, for profits and not for profits. And we had the privilege of having Bob Kramer who is a 35 year veteran of the industry, a little more on the for profit than nonprofit, but he really talked about uh, the opportunities and challenges of single site communities going forward. And it's good for our board to understand some of the challenges they encounter, which you know include, you know how you evolve technology, how you uh, continue to to attract and retain uh, the right leadership, uh, and uh, and so on. So that was I think helpful to our board. Uh, outside influence is is great to give perspective. And then lastly, you know the CEO monthly report. Uh, you know, it's just sometimes we take it for granted. It's it's not that it's profound, but it is a way in which we continue that transparent communication of our the economics of our of our organization. So, uh, you know, please review that. And as you know, you can always come to Christy or to me if you want some more details about something that isn't otherwise clear. 
And uh, the next fireside chat will be on the 28th of May. And I am really hoping that by the time we get to the end of June, we have some version of this that's in person so we can start to reconnect uh, as, as we have in the past and, and we all will enjoy and benefit from that. There you have it. Great, thank you, thank you, Mike. Um, I just, I had a few, th my thoughts uh, tacking on to what Mike said about the meeting that uh, and, uh, and Mike and I had on uh, Monday morning. It was really very good. It was an excellent meeting. Um, we understand each other more, uh, more on these issues than we did before we started the meeting. Uh, as Mike said, there's no, no recipe that you can uh, set out that'll cover all future situations, but we worked through several uh, ones that might be coming up and kind of you know, game played those, how decisions we made, how resident input would be brought in. We recognize that resident input is something that will contribute to a better result in most, more cases than not. Uh, at the very least, it'll be a, a way of communicating broadly and people understand the basis for decisions and so on, and, and know that they had the opportunity for, for input. So um, right now, the three of us, uh, I think are a well-tuned uh, machine on, in this regard. Uh, it'll be up to our uh, uh, successors. Uh, Ann and I will be leaving before Mike. Uh, to carry forward in that spirit and, and make sure that that kind of communi communication keeps on going. We have mechanisms in place like the liaison committees, which are important uh, venues for that kind of exchange built in right into the mechanism of the uh, relationship between residents, council and management. And so full advantage needs to be taken of that with open minds and, and uh, free and fair communication at that level. So I'm pleased that um, we came out learning more than we knew going in. <laughs> the shortest way to put it. So uh, thank you, Mike. And uh, I thank Anne if she's in the audience uh, of this webinar uh, for her participation. It was really a good meeting. Great. Thank you, Peter. Okay, thanks, Mike. See you later See sometime. You. But when's the next crisis? No, oh, no I don't <laughs> Well, I'm working on that calendar. I want to make sure I sequence them so we enjoy them periodically throughout the year. Okay, good. Good idea. No. Call me anytime you want. Okay, so we go on to the second half of the meeting, uh, which will consist of coordinator reports. Uh, we have a couple of those. Uh, we have uh, two uh, committees, two of our wonderful committees uh, will be in the spotlight and George will introduce them. Uh, the art committee with Ann Kelly and Wednesday Night Live, uh, Nancy Federici. So uh, right now I'll stop the chair and uh, call upon Judy Ostro to uh, give a report. Well, hello, there are two of my committees that I would like to uh, give special recognition to and thank you, Peter, for the time on the program. The first one is the annual Memorial Day uh, observance, which Tom Hayward has organized for us. Memorial Day will be observed on Monday, May 31st. Um, it will have to be uh, by Zoom uh, for the second year, unfortunately. Um, but Tom has planned that we will sing the Star Spangled Banner. He has also invited a friend, a uh, Navy captain, to speak. And the, um, let's see. And then they will end with some music. So um, this will be on Zoom, uh, Zoom, as I say, rather than live. But we, we were hoping that in the future it will be, of course, back in, in uh, Anderson Hall. So that's the annual Memorial Day observance by, um, organized by Tom Hayward. <coughs> the second committee I'd like to highlight is neighborhoods. And they have been presenting, as you know, quite a number of good programs about neighborhoods, all, all uh, virtually. Um, they have a couple coming up tonight. There will be one on Nor North Bell Ridge. And May 25th, there will be another program on the Kate and Revels family of Capitol Hill. And in June, uh, we've got two more programs coming up. One uh, about hiking Washington's history. And then a, a, another one called Times of Resilience in the Pacific Northwest. 
so that they are really keeping us very well informed about our community. We, and I hope you've also been watching the very interesting presentations by David Williams. Now the committee is looking ahead toward the summer and we're thinking of um, getting a little um, outside of our orbit and taking some field trips. So watch the, the, uh, for the news of possible trips to the locks, possible trips to, the, um, to West Seattle, possible trips to the new um, uh, Metro uh, Link Station at North, Northgate. So the, the, this committee is very creative and they're thinking of good ways to in, in, um, enter, have an entertaining and informative experience here within Seattle, particularly within our neighborhood. So thank you for your time. Any questions for Judy? Thank you, Judy. That's great to hear those, those words. Very good. Uh, Beth Davis, uh, you're up. Okay. I'm the liaison for the five assisted living uh, committees. And now that assisted living is slowly, slowly opening up, uh, the committees are revving up their activities. And one of them is the flower committee, which is very different, a separate committee from the one on the first floor flower arrangements. And what they do is take up us flower arrangements in small phases up to the three different assisted living areas, I think the dining rooms, but I might be wrong on that. And what has happened is that slowly, slowly, during this year of pandemic, natural attrition has reduced the number of people in the assisted living flower committee. And so they're now going it's getting more interesting. We can go up there now without going through the intense uh, checking in procedures because we don't go into the residence rooms. And we haven't got very many people. So they're looking forward to hoping that some people will think it's time to start trying out some new things and they can try out the flower committee. So why would they want to join? Well, it's fun being a part of a group that can actively take up the elevator to any of the assisted living facilities and put flowers around one week and then come back the next week and fill in the water again. And it is a delight to be able to do something that lightens up the life of other people. And when I'm in support of living, I'm certainly going to want to have flowers to look at. And it isn't all that much work, really. It's also a delight to make flower arrangements if you happen to like it. So if any of these appeal to you, give a call to Ann Kelly or to me, Beth Davis. We're both in the phone book and we'll be delighted to give you more information and more details. Thank you. Great, Beth, thank you. Uh, any questions for Beth? That's a good thing to get filled up, that is that committee does good work. And I, I know it makes a big difference for people in residence there. So thank you very much. Okay, now it's time for the master electrician to come in and shine the spotlight a little bit. <laughs> master electrician being George Counts in this case. Uh, and he'll be introducing the uh, two uh, great committees that are being focused, that is the focus of our spotlight presentations today. You're, you're on, George. Thank you very much. In addition to the committees that you just heard about, for the month of May, we'd like to take an in-depth look at two committees. The first will be 
those curators of an outstanding art collection, the Art Committee. And Ann Kelly has a report for us. Ann? Thank you, George. Uh, good afternoon. I thank you for inviting me on the behalf of the committee, art committee, to talk about the art programs. Um, and also thank you for sponsoring the art appreciation projects of the committee. This year, there are currently 21 committee uh, members, including nine newcomers. Each of the seven sections of the committee is responsible for a separate program. So you can see it's a huge committee with lots of enthusiasm and they get a lot of work done. <clears throat> I will start describing the recent changes in the fireplace lounge uh, because that has been of great current interest. The prelude to selecting and hanging the art in the fireplace lounge was the work done by an army of contractors, decorators, both professional and also the Horizon House Decorating Committee and the patient Eli Leminski. The art committee curator section under Priscilla Lang came later on the scene. Our assignment was to select art that complemented the colors and the styles, style that has already been, uh, had already been selected. We did that by selecting new art, art, in other words, art new to our collection or art that had been hanging elsewhere. And uh, once it's changed, it has a completely different look. So we wanted to reflect the fre freshness of the changes in the lounge. The core of the decisions were made by Priscilla Lang, George Loschke, and the various other members of the section. And I might add, we had many useful suggestions from the residents during the course of the event. Two paintings by Koenig were removed, moved from the Terry Street hallway and repositioned in the fireplace lounge. A large blue and yellow piece was placed on the back of the library wall. And that's really the focus of that room. Uh, the smaller, a smaller um, painting by Koenig in shades of gray hangs over the uh, coffee counter. Horizon House recently received several very nice donations of art. One by the artist Harcherick is hanging over the fireplace. It's a beautiful green one uh, entitled March Fields. And it makes you feel like you're out in the open air when you're sitting there looking at it. Uh, another one is one by Isaacson and it's, whole, it's hanging on the south wall, oh, excuse me, the north wall by the large windows. It, has, it picks up the yellows in the furniture and elsewhere. Horizon House recently received several very nice donations of art. Uh, one, um, uh, by the painter Lois Graham, hangs alone on the north wall of the Terry Street uh, corridor. I, I think you may have noticed it. It's very active with lots of colors and very good sized. All of these pieces required skillful positioning and hanging for which we owe thanks to Mark, our, our picture hanger and another member of our team. Lighting is a project that uh, has yet to be completed, but it's essential. Uh, to enhance the art. And um, Priscilla and George spent uh, long discussions with the electricians and the contractors. And I think that uh, as time goes on, the process will continue and you can look forward to further changes that will enhance the art. Um, may I have the slide please, Peter? A lar this large, stunning blue glass vessel 
with sand carving was a recent um, acquisition donated uh, to the uh, Horizon House collection. It's the work of Preston Singletary, who's a Tlingit Native American, uh, well known for his work in glass and also wood and wood carving. This is a blown glass piece, um, really quite stunning. It's 17 inches across and 20 inches high. So you can't really appreciate the size on this in this photograph, but it really is quite wonderful. Uh, we haven't decided exactly where to place it yet, but uh, we're working on it. And we're hoping to have the natural, natural light shine through the glass to really show off its beautiful color. These are only several recent activities of the art committee. Uh, all of the sections have been busy. <laughs> and uh, so there are other ongoing projects. Uh, many include some of the following, let's say the series of self-guided self tours of Horizon House Art, where you can check out placards at the front desk and then uh, wander around through our art and, and learn more about the artists and the pieces. And uh, then of course there are the art, vi virtual art lectures and films and features that are available on YouTube and HHTV. And they're also listed on the HH Connect. Under the title of Art Fix, I'm sure you'll recognize that name. A display of the collections belonging to residents are displayed in the, in the cabinet uh, near the dining room. And also the picture of the month belonging to residents are rotated monthly. Finally, the next big effort, and it's underway now with a, a group of, I think there are four people involved in it, is development of a digital catalog listing all the artworks uh, belonging to Horizon House and some of the features about the artists and about how they were acquired and other interesting facts that, to know about the art. It's going to be interesting for all of us, but it's also a great value to the institution so that they know the, the size of the collection, the position of where the pictures are hanging, the art is hanging, and um, that will be a helpful thing for the administration to know about. So I, I thank you for the opportunity to share with you our work and also for your support of the art committee. Thanks. Well, thank you, Anne. I think I have at least one question. Uh, I, the hand went up at, at Dick, Dick Clark's screen. Dick, unmute yourself if you want to present your question. Oh, you're, you're muted. You need to unmute. I didn't have a question, Peter, because I wanted to highlight something that doesn't appear to be on the agenda. And it probably happened because I had to leave the meeting early last week. Okay, could you hold on just a second while I thank Anne and then uh, yes. continue. So, Anne, thank you very much. You know, your discussion about the lighting was so well illustrated by the phenomenal tulips that hang in the uh, <laughs> foyer to the uh, dining room area. Yes. What those what, what the lights bring out, I know Mark worked on that and came up with a wonderful solution. It, it, it just brings them to life. You feel like the, su the sunshine is actually coming through the paint rather than the light shining on on the uh, painting. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, people right. take a look at that closely when you go by the next time. So thank you, Anne, very, very much. Thank you. Uh, somebody has some questions, I'll, I'll give the floor back to, to Dick. And you need to unmute now. I wanted to just quickly highlight, Peter, the Secular Humanism Committee. Uh, it's in our minutes, but uh, they now have a position in the library where they have books set up for people to check out. Uh, they have a shelf of their own. I believe they have 25 or so books in there. 
And uh, this is under the leadership of Joan Lawson. Just wanted to highlight that so people know about it. Okay, great, thank you. Now people see exactly who this guy is. I said is such a, gonna be such a great leader of the nominating committee. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dick. Okay, George, uh, it's your turn to introduce our next spotlight feature. For the month of May, the other committee activity we would like to spotlight is the wonderfully successful Wednesday Night Live series. It's like the bright star of the week. And we will have Nancy Federici tell us about it. Nancy? Thank you, George. And it's really nice to be looking at all the rest of you and being on screen with you with resident council. It's been a while since I've been able to see all of you. I'd like to talk just a little bit about our past the present where we are right now with Wednesday Night Live and where we're going to have to go in our future. First of all, I moved here in 2007 and this group was called the Lounge Committee. And we thought, you know, it's a little bit more than just a lounge program that we're putting on. So let's spiff it up a little bit. We had a lot of people talk about different ways that they could make this name spark up. So it became in 2014, Wednesday Night Live. I don't think SNL on Saturday had anything to do with it, but you know, it does it. And we have been booked out for the past five years for every single 40 programs that we do. We book out a full year in advance. We'll go to that in a few minutes because as we cannot do that anymore. We work with a lot of professional people in the community, and this is what we go for. Uh, we don't want just some run-of-the-mill person coming off the street who wants to do a program with his piano or his accordion or whatever. So we have kind of built up a different program. But with 40 programs each year, this keeps us all hopping, and we have just 10 of us on the committee. Anybody else with any musical background or interest, we would love to have you come and join us, please. Uh, with 40 different programs, each one is different. It could be somebody playing a piano with all classical music or jazz or something like that, or a guitarist. Up to 65 people singing at one end of the place, or one time I had 33 string people from an orchestra come and do a program. Each one of our setups is very different and we try to keep them varied. So, you know, we're looking at OK Corral, which is our own group, our string alongs, you know, we want to incorporate our own people, but we have lots of other corrals that want to come and sing from very highly professional groups to even traveling groups, to kids from the Northwest choirs, the senior groups, um, bluegrass, singing, uh, let's see, what else can I say? Just lots of different corrals and um, men's groups, women's groups, you name it. We have intimate chamber music that we can do and we seat everybody kind of around an arc around them. So you can get up as close, as personal as you want to and watch them play and listen to them carefully. Jazz, you don't have to go to bars to hear good jazz. We try to bring it to you here. And hopefully you understand, you know, the quality of the programming that we are bringing in. You don't always have to go to Benaroya to pick up a good program or to Mini Hall or some of these other places. Just come into Anderson Hall when it's going to be available once again. We have school programs. Some of them are traveling from out of state and we do love to have them drop in and let us know and that's how we do some extra programming for you. Once the theaters get open with musicals, we do previews and sometimes introduce some of your people who are going to be performing at the act or at Fifth, Fifth Avenue, or we've even brought some people from the traveling programs that come into the Paramount. And I think those are the things that are exciting. We've had programs outside, bands especially when it comes to the 4th of July. It's fun putting people out on the B1 Terrace out there and enjoying some outdoor music and then letting the park pick it up too and enjoy it along with it. The performers love, love, love to come here. And I think they've expressed that many times to all of you openly. 
it's difficult for them to do that right now. And the reason they come is they know that we financially support the arts, all of you. I know we do. I think Anne will agree with that too, how we support all of the arts within the community. And they love coming here to show off. Plus, we also are a very enthusiastic, trained group of people who love to come and hear good music. Then COVID hit. This really changed us. All of a sudden, we had an entire year of programs that we were booking even into 2020 at that point, and we had to cancel them all. We were going kind of two to three months in advance, wondering, you know, how long this was going to last. And then we just canceled out the entire, as my mother would have said, kitten caboodle of it. Anyway, we waited for two months trying to figure out what we could do, and we finally said, you know, this house needs to be on a schedule. And we usually had Wednesday nights, all but that third Wednesday. Let's go for it and see what we can start putting together to bring to all of you on your TV set. Wasn't easy to do. You know, uh, musicians are not people who know how to do filming, how to do YouTubes, unless they've got some money behind them. They were all out of work, wanting to do things, but trying to figure out and discover new ways of how they could do programming for us. And it was kind of loped along for a while. It's been very, very difficult. I won't tell you that it has been easy to put these programs together. Um, they don't have the finances to bring in a filming group or to do some things. So people were doing things on their decks, out in their backyard, um, putting together things of programs they had done and trying to sequence them into one great big YouTube that would last for 45 minutes or whatever. And some DVDs came in, but very, very few. Anyway, we're still struggling to find programs for you each week, but we are staying several weeks or several months ahead, and this is good. It's an all new ball game for us, as well as for all of our performers. It's a new world for them to be learning into also. We offer honorariums, a very small one for each group that comes, and you know, as you go on your computers, you notice there are a lot of streamed, wonderful musical programs. But the thing is, they're all allotted for specific times. And it's difficult for us to even be get to get hold of them and be able to bring them in on to a specific time on a Wednesday. Thank you so much, Nancy. Are you about finished? We I've got to... one more minute. Music or the musicians coming up are choosing not to come in until we have a full new Anderson Hall where they can come and have a full array of people that they can perform to. So we're looking at probably another year out with my program coming through on our TV set. I do want to thank Monday Market. We're a great user of your funds. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't be doing what we're doing even for now. Uh, thank you, kudos to Cami, to Susan, and for all of your many, many workers. All of you out there listening, keep spending your dollars down there, would you please? And bring in your things that need to be sold out. Our committee loves doing these programs for us, and we are going to continue in the future and hopefully live within the year, boy, we will see. Thank you for all of your support. And thank you, George for letting me come. Thank you very much. Next is Audrey Whitecamp. And here it is, the finale. <laughs> Audrey, you're on. Okay. I have to get unmuted here, just a second. You're okay. Okay. Oh, you went the other way. You were... okay. okay. Now can you hear me? Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm going to um, revisit a question that I tried to answer last month and that did not work. Um, it, it pertains to what are the charities that Horizon House supports. Um, 
these are charities that the Horizon House Corporation, not the um, uh, not not the uh, residents. Um, Dick, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the answer comes from Christy Seymour, our chief financial officer. And she said, uh, each year, the Community Relations and Diversity Committee of Horizon House Board of Trustees makes decisions about how they should donate money. And the list changes somewhat each year, but all their selections are within Seattle and they are they go to groups that are underrepresented in Horizon House, such because of race, ethnicity, uh, religious, and low income. This year, uh, the philanthropy committee split a forty thousand dollar grant uh, between these ch charities. There were two smaller ones to begin with: Horizon House Shelter. Family Sewing Group, which meets right here. Uh, they got $2,000 and $3,000 to Simon's House Lunch Program. The other groups each got $5,000 each. Bird Bar Place, Catholic Community Services, Westlake Apartments, Central Area Senior Center, Lifelong AIDS um, Alliance, Pike Place Market Senior Center, Southeast Saint Senior Center, and United Indians of All Tribes. So that was a $40,000 grant. In addition to this, Horizon House uh, Corporation traditionally pays dues to the Council for Health and Human Service Ministries of the United Church of Christ because of our association uh, with UCC and the First Hill Improvement Association and Freeway Park Association because they are associations that benefit the neighborhood and we want to be good neighbors. Along with Virginia Mason, we also help fund merchants from Pike Place Market come and set up the farmer's market on 9th and University during the summer. And the funds for these last four come from the regular Horizon House budget. Uh, because this is complicated, and I've just mentioned a lot of different names, I have already posted on the bulletin board in the mail room uh, the question and answer so that you can look at it. If you want a written copy of this, uh, please contact me. Thank you. Great, thank you. Excellent, excellent report and excellent answer and wonderful charities. It's good to know, it's really good to know. Well, a wire by six minutes. Uh, unless anybody else has something immediately pressing and needs to be discussed, I'm about to raise my hand and make believe I have a gavel on it. And then uh, Risa will actually end the meeting electronically. But right now, the meeting is closed. It's over. I see you next month. Amen.